Hey guys and welcome back. My name is Miss Danielson and today we're looking at standard index form. In today's lesson, we'll refer back to a couple of our other lessons, mainly multiplying and dividing by base 10 numbers and the use of indices, both positive and negative indices. So I'll link them down in the description box for you below if you haven't seen them yet. If you have seen them already, you should be ready to go. And watch out, there's at least one typo in this lesson. Let me know down in the comment section if you can find it. If you own a scientific calculator, you very likely have come across standard form unintentionally at some point in the past. These calculator displays at the bottom here show values in standard form. 6 times 10 with this big 2 here, 5 times 10 with this minus 4 here, and 5.7 times 10 with this minus 4 here. Now what does that mean? Standard form is the use of multiplication by base 10 values. Those are index terms where the base number is 10 and then we have some power for that 10. This is particularly useful on calculators when you don't have very much space to display a very large or a very small number. As we can see down here, sometimes very small numbers can take up a lot of space to write. Something you need to remember is that indices or powers tell us how many times we should multiply by the base number. So for powers of 10, we've got a base value of 10, which is multiplied by itself repeatedly some number of times. 10 to the power of 1, for example, is just a single 10. 10 to the power of 2 is the result of multiplying two 10s together. Now be careful, that's 10 times 10, which is 100, not 2 times 10, which is 20. 10 to the power of 3 are three 10s multiplied together. That's not 3 multiplied by 10, that is 10 times 10 times 10 which is a thousand. And 10 to the power of four are four tens repeatedly multiplied together. 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 is 10,000. Notice something interesting about base 10 numbers. 10 to the power of any value will have that number of zeros after the one. So 10 to the power of one has one zero. 10 to the power of two has two zeros. 10 to the power of three has three zeros. 10 to the power of 4 has 4 zeros. What would 10 to the power of 0 be? 10 to the power of 0 is just 1. In fact, any value to the power of 0 will always be 1. And this is something that we've learned before. Now, as you can see, base 10 numbers are some of the easiest numbers that we can multiply by. You should remember from our previous lesson, base 10 multiplication and division, Multiplying by 10 just changes the place value of all of the digits in the number. So for example, 4 times 10 to the power of 4, that will change the place value of the 4, which is right now in the units, and it will move it into the tens of thousands position. Note that the decimal would have been after the 4, and I've moved that decimal 1, 2, 3, 4 places. The same number of places as the index indicates. We could do that with a decimal number as well. So 2.3 times 10 to the power of 7, I need to move all of my digits 7 place values up. Or if you find this easier, just think about where that decimal is. That decimal needs to move 7 places. One place will move it after the 3, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 places all together puts an extra six zeros after that three. So that's 23 million. Now I won't take up too much more of your time with multiplying and dividing by base 10 numbers, as you could always just go to this video and check it out. It's linked down in the description box below. Let's go on to negative powers. And negative powers we've seen before in this video. Again, that one's linked down in the description box for you below as well. Just a quick reminder, Negative powers means that if we start with 1, we are going to divide 1 by the base number repeatedly the number of times indicated by the index. So think of this as 10 to the power of 0 being 1. I'm not multiplying that 1 by 10 any times, nor am I dividing 1 by 10 any times. But when I have 10 to the power of negative 1, that would be 1 divided by 
one ten. So one over ten, one tenth. Ten to the power of negative two would be one divided by ten squared, which is a hundred. So that gives us one over a hundred, which is as a decimal one hundred. Or I could do ten to the power of negative three. That's one divided by ten cubed. Ten cubed is a thousand, so one over a thousand is one thousandth. And you see where I'm going with this, right? 10 to the power of negative 4 is 1 over 10 to the power of 4, which is 1 over 10,000, which is 1 in the tens of thousands position. Notice that the decimal place of the 1 for each of these cases matches the absolute value of the index. This number here has zero decimal places, zero digits after the decimal. This number here has the 1 one place after the decimal. One place, just like the negative one we have as the index. This decimal number has two decimal places. The one is two decimal places away from the decimal point to match the index of negative two. Here, the one's in the one, two, three, the third decimal place, just like our negative three index tells us. And here, our one is the one, two, three, fourth decimal place. So it should be just as easy to work out the negative powers of 10 as it is to work out the positive powers of 10. So let's try some examples. Feel free to hit pause and copy these down and try them for yourself first. Otherwise, you can just go through them with me. For example, 3, 4 times 10 to the power of negative 2 is the same thing as 4 times 1 over 100, because remember this is 1 over 10 squared. And 4 times 1 over 100 is the same thing as 4 times 1, which is 4, divided by 100. So that's 4 hundredths. For question 4, 0 0.13 times 10 to the power of 9. We're going to move that decimal 9 places to shift all of these digits 9 place values up. So that's 130 million. Remember, my decimal was here in front of the 1, and I've moved it 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 places to the end of the number. Example 5, 2,400 times by 10 to the power of 3. Every time we multiply by 10, the numbers shift up one place value. So that's going to be shifting those place values up three places. I can just tag on an extra three zeros to the end there. So that's 2,400,000. For example, 6, we're multiplying by 10 to the power of negative 7. That's the same thing as dividing by 10 seven times repeatedly, or multiplying by 1 over 10 to the power of 7. Note the number of zeros here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. But if I multiply by this fraction, I'll just be multiplying by 1, so that's 134,500, dividing by 10 million. So moving the decimal, which is heading at the end of this number here, seven places, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I need one more place, so I'll have to fill that in with a 0. And there we have it. For the last question here, multiplying by 10 to the power of negative 3, it's the same thing as dividing by 10 three times, or multiplying by 1 over 1,000. Let's move that decimal point three places so that all of the digits shift three place values down in value. So moving my decimal one place puts it in front of the zero. I need two more places, so I need to fill that in with two more zeros, leaving me with 0 0.00, 00823. You can see now why I wouldn't want to write that whole thing out and why your calculator sometimes likes to give you answers in standard form because that takes up less space on the screen and they can still display that same either very big or very small number. But up until now, we haven't actually been looking at examples of correct standard form. Values written in standard form must be written as some value between 1 and 10 so the decimal should really be after the first non-zero digit, and that value is multiplied by some power of 10. So here are some examples. 
Some of them are in correct standard form and some of them are not. Can you spot which one's not? These are all in correct standard form. Four is a value between one and 10. 2.9 is a value between one and 10. And 7.21 is a value between one and 10. 0 0.48, however, is not a value between one and 10. Now, you might be tempted to correct this by just saying, ah, to make it a number between one and 10, put the decimal between the four and the eight. 4.8 is between one and 10, but you also need to adjust this base 10 value. So the easiest way to correct a mistake in standard form is to first expand it out. This should be fairly straightforward for us now, since we now know how to multiply and divide by base 10 values, and we understand what the index mean. 4 times 10 to the power of 3 is 4 times 10, 3 times, so that's 4 times 1,000. 2.9 times 10 to the power of 5 is 2.9, repeatedly multiplied by 10 five times. So move that decimal five places. One place, we'll move the decimal to after the nine. I've got four more places to go, so I filled those four places in with these four zeros. 7.21 times 10 to the power of eight. Again, I've got two places to move the decimal after the one. And then I've got six more to go to make eight places in total. So that's going to be 721 with six extra zeros after it, 721 million. This last number, which is not in correct standard form, can still be expanded out times 10 to the power of four. Let's move that decimal four places. One, two will take it to the end of the number. I've got two more to go, so I need two zeros after that, 4,800. So now that I know what value 0 0.48 times 10 to the power of 4 has, I can convert this into correct standard form by making it some number between 1 and 10. So I'll put my decimal after the first non-zero digit, so 4.8, that's a number between 1 and 10. But then I need to multiply by 10 to the power of some value. How many times do I need to multiply by 10 to move a decimal from here to where it belongs at the end of the number? That's three places, so 4.8 times 10 to the power of three. Now go ahead and copy those examples down before we move on. Coming back to the examples we did before, which were not in correct standard form, now that we've already expanded them out, can we put them in correct standard form? Go ahead and have a look at what you've written down before and see if you can. Feel free to hit pause now and try it for yourself. Otherwise, I'll talk you through it. So example four here, 0 0.13 is not a number between one and 10. I would need to have the decimal after the first non-zero digit. So 1.3 is a number between one and 10. If I put my decimal here, how many times do I need to multiply by 10 to get it to the end of my number? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight place values. I would need to do 1.3 times 10 to the power of eight to form this value. Let's try that for example five. Now this is obviously not a number between one and 10. I need to put my decimal after the first non-zero digit, so 2.4, and then I need to multiply by 10 some number of times. This is not the correct number of times. If I put my decimal after the two, so it's 2.4, how many times do I need to multiply by 10 to move the decimal to the end of the number? Are you counting them with me? That should be three and three, that's six places. So that's 2.4 times 10 to the power of six. This next one is obviously not a number between one and 10. So if I put my decimal after the first non-zero digit, so 1.4, three, four, five, that is a number between one and 10. Well, what do I need to multiply that by to get my decimal into the right place? This is not the correct base 10 value to be multiplying by. If my decimal's here, I need to move it one, two places backwards. I want this number to be smaller than 1.345. So I'm multiplying by 10 to some negative power. How many places is that? 
two places. So 1.345 times 10 to the power of negative 2. And example 7. Obviously, again, this is not a number between 1 and 10. We need to put that decimal after the first non-zero digit, so that's after the 8. 8.23 is a number between 1 and 10. So if my decimal is here and I need to move it to there, what do I need to multiply it by? Let's count the places. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 places. And I want this number to be smaller than 8.23. So I'm moving that decimal in a negative direction to shift the place values down. So I'm moving that decimal 5 places. I'll multiply by 10 to the power of negative 5. Got it? Let's try a couple of other examples before we go on to the practice exercise. Now this one's a bit of a trick question. What's wrong with it? Well, obviously, this is not a number between 1 and 10. The decimal needs to be after the 4. So it would be 4.27 times 10 to the power of, oh wait, it's not times. It needs to be a multiplication. So first, let's expand this out. And then let's correct that expanded answer and put it in correct standard form. So if we're going to divide by 10 to the power of 4, we're dividing by 10 four times. We'll move that decimal four places to make this number smaller. So 1, 2, I need two more places, so I need two more zeros, 0 0.00427. Now that's the value of this expression but I want to write this in standard form. So I need a number between 1 and 10 multiplied by some base 10 value. The number between 1 and 10 is 4.27, putting the decimal after the first non-zero digit. And I need to move that decimal how many places? 1, 2, 3 places, making this value smaller. I'm moving the digits three place values down. So I'll multiply by 10 to the power of negative three. One more example. Again, what's wrong with this one? It's not a value between one and 10, and it's not being multiplied by some base 10 value, it's being divided. So let's first work this out, so we'll expand it out, and then we'll convert it back to the correct index form. The trick about this is we're dividing by 10 to some negative power. Remember, a negative power is the same thing as a fraction of 1 over 10 to that positive power. So this is 0 0.027 divided by 1 over 10 to the power of 3. Dividing by a fraction, you should know, is the same thing as multiplying by the inverse fraction. So flipping that fraction over. So that's 0 0.027 times by 1,000 over 1. 1,000 over 1 is 1,000. So 0 0.027 times by 1,000. Let's move that decimal point three places to make this number bigger. 1, 2, 3 is 27. So this strange expression here, which is not in standard form, has a value of 27. So put 27 into standard form we need to put the decimal after the first non-zero digit. So after the 2, 2.7 would make that a number between 1 and 10. But then how many times do I need to multiply by 10 to move that decimal to the end of the number? 1, right? So 27 is the same thing as 2.7 times 10 to the power of 1, or simply just 2.7 times 10. Now that's correct standard form. Are we ready for a practice exercise now? Go ahead and evaluate the following. They may be in correct standard form or not, but go ahead and work them through. And then for question two, tell me which of the questions above were not in standard form. And if they're not in standard form, I want you to correct them and put them in standard form. Go ahead and hit pause now so that you can work that through and push play when you're ready to take it up. I hope you had a chance to hit pause because here come your answers. 
for question 1a, b, c, d, e, f, g, h, i, and for question 2, almost all of them. A was in standard form, 2.8 times 10 to the power of something. B was in standard form, 4.13 times 10 to the power of something. C was not standard form, 28.4 is not between 1 and 10. D was not in standard form. E you might have thought was in standard form, 3.17 is between 1 and 10. But this is dividing by 10. We need it to be multiplying by 10. F as well, 4.27 is a number between 1 and 10, but we want to multiply, not divide, by a base 10 number. G, 0 0.12 is not between 1 and 10. H, 30 is not between 1 and 10. I, 7 is between 1 and 10, but we're dividing here. We want to be multiplying. So putting these in correct standard form, looking at your answers above. Question C should be 2.84 times 10 to the power of negative 5. We need to move that decimal one extra place. Question D should be 8.23 times 10 to the power of negative 5. We need to move that decimal two extra places. E should have been 3.14 times 10 to the power of negative 4. Rather than dividing or multiplying, but our index is negative. F should have been 4.27 times 10 to the power of positive 2, rather than dividing by 10 with a negative power or multiplying by 10 with a positive power. Question G should have been 1.2 times 10 to the power of 4. We don't need to move that decimal quite as many places. Question H should have been 3 times 10 to the power of negative 1. We don't need to shift the place values down quite so far if we start with a smaller value. And i should have been 7 times 10 to the power of 3. Again, rather than dividing by 10 to some negative power, we're multiplying by 10 to a positive power. Now, how did that go for you? Does it make sense? Is there anything that's still a bit unclear? I'll bet the positive and negatives and the multiplying and dividing might be a bit confusing for some of you. So please let me know down in the comment section if I can help clarify it for you. Otherwise, well done. Keep practicing. And I'll see you soon.